excited about what God is doing. God begin to deal with me because we're, we're in the middle of this transition. We're in the middle of this transition of finding out who we are in Christ. Right? I mean, that is what we've been dealing with over and over and over. And I'll tell you why. It's because we are the event that the world is looking for. Right. We are. Yeah. If we don't become the event, they're not going to see Christ. Right. Now, we have taken our time and we have secured ourselves in our churches and we have this idea that any second Jesus Christ is coming back. I don't have a problem with that unless it's keeping you from being the event you're supposed to be out there. I believe in a literal return of Christ. I personally don't think it's going to be today. I hope it's not today. You know why I hope it's not today? There's too many lost loved ones out there. I don't know about you, but I got lost loved ones. I don't want Christ to come back today. Oh, we sound real religious. No, come back, Jesus. No, don't come back. I got loved ones. Not only that, we got people out in three rivers in Bible County hadn't been saved. We've got, you know, there is, if we're not careful, we get this attitude, it's all about me. I have to tell you this, it's not all about you. It is all about us showing Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. And I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but it's not going to happen in here. It's going to happen right out there. I, you know, uh, I could get you to lift your hands. How many say most of the people in here, probably all of them would raise their hand. Say, well, then why in the world do I need to share, tell you about Jesus Christ here? You're saved. You ought to know better. What you need is to display our So God began to deal with it in the midst of all of that because uh, in the midst of this, these sermons, these scriptures that I'm going to read today, very familiar verse of scripture. Acts, the third chapter, verses 1 through 8. This is called, this sermon is called The Spirit of expect, uh, Expectancy. But it is not what you thought. So just hang on. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave them heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping uh, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now I preach these verses of Scripture. Often in my life I preached them here. But God began to deal with me about something. So if you'll give me just a little time, I'm not going to take long because I have... One point and one point only. Now, there may be some sub points in there, I just don't so clear. But there's one main point, okay, there's one main point, and, and then, you know, we'll see how it goes from there. So, in this story, it sounds pretty awesome, doesn't it? Guy laid crippled, let's see, I need some help here. Okay, come here, son. Now, I am not carrying Caleb anywhere, let's just be very clear, alright? So Caleb is going to play the cripple guy. And they're going to set him at the... You can actually sit down on the stage. <laughs> Easy there, boy. That stage you got to last. Uh, every day, bring him to the temple. Every day, he has to. Every day, round the cup. Now, I'll be honest with you. He probably made all right. Or they wouldn't have brought him back every day. He couldn't make a living. He was crippled. This was it. Right so, Peter and John comes along. Going to church like they always did. So let's be very clear. This was their routine. This wasn't the first time they'd seen this fellow. They went to the church every day, or whenever prayer time was, which was the ninth hour, 
They went to church every day, into the temple to pray. This wasn't the first time they'd seen it. But today was different. So in the middle of what was going on, they were walking by, the crippled man said, alms. I don't know if he had a cup, that's just something we always do. Right, right, right. Alms. Ah, yep. <laughs> Somebody give that baby some money. I mean, you know. <laughs> And so Peter turned around. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, such as I have to give I thee. My question to you, in the midst of this story, is which one are you? You see, I've spent all of my life in church and I've heard more messages on us broken, us crippled, 12 steps for this and 3 steps for that. We identify easily with the cripple. I can't do it. I need something from someone else. We can identify with that. Right? What do you identify in that story? Are you the cripple? Now, let me be very clear. If you've got something going on in your life and you need God to do something, God's willing to do it. I'm, please be clear. All right? But, you know, I've been talking to us about maturing. I've been talking to us about learning who we are. I've been talking to us that there is a greater thing out there for us. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, the end of the third verse in the Message Bible says, there's so much more, so let's get on with it. I'm tired of hearing messages about crippled because if I keep telling you you're crippled, then that's what you're going to see yourself as crippled. You're going to continue to identify with the crippled man in that story. But I'm telling you there's something else that we need to learn. And that is we shouldn't identify with the cripple any longer. We're supposed to identify with Peter and John. We're supposed to identify with the Christ that's in us. Right. Yes. What about the woman at the well? Or the woman with the issue? Blood, or the woman whose son was dead, or the daughter whose, or the, the the woman whose daughter was was a demon possessed. We don't have a problem identifying with the hurting people, but there's more. Because you see, as long as you identify with the dirt, you gonna save the dirt. You realize that God scooped us out of the dust of the ground and made us into what we are, and then breathed into us the breath of life. You realize that what he did was he put a seed within the dirt that was going to bring forth life. You realize that's what he was doing, right? So we don't have a problem identifying with the dirt because, buddy, that's us. Depression, anxiety, fear, stress, we need healing, we need money, we need, we need, we need, we need, we need. Rattle, 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 rattle. God, give me, God, give me, God, give me, God, give me. God has already. It's inside of you. And until you start pulling from the inside of you, you're going to keep pulling from the outside. Now, if you're hurting, you're a cripple, get healed. But quit identifying with the hurt. Quit identifying with the dirt. You realize that identifying with the seed is what's going to change it. Not identifying with the dirt. So my question in these stories is who are you? Are you the sick? Are you the hurting? Are you the dying? Are you the broke? Or are you something else? You see, the problem is, as long as I am crippled, the world doesn't see the event because I'm the event. And if I'm crippled, not event, no event's going to happen. You see, I've been, see, the problem is we're still worried about us. We're still worried about my feelings and my, my desires and my wants. And listen, those are legitimate things. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying you've already got the answer. How dare you say you don't if you've got Jesus Christ on the inside of you? How dare you say you're less than? How you're not worthy if you've got Jesus Christ living on the inside of you. How dare you take a second seat? How dare you stay crippled? Right, right. Yes, yes. If you've got Jesus. That's right. You know what we do? We go ahead. Some of y'all are beginning to understand. I'm listening. I hear the testimony. 
that you can walk. And you didn't know it. Some of you have been in church forever and you didn't know it. You've been told you've been beat down and you're not worthy and you're barely making it and all of those things. Look, you believe that if you want to. That's your call. What I am telling you is that on the inside of you is something that's going to change everything. You see, until we identify with the Christ, with Peter, and we say, such as I have already. Yeah. Now I'm going to hurt you. You ready? I'm really going to hurt you. You realize Jesus Christ never prayed to God to bless the food. Oh, I see those wheels turning. You trying to remember those scriptures? Nope. Can I tell you that Jesus Christ never prayed to God to raise the dead? He never prayed to God to heal the sick. Never. The Word of God says that He said, right here. He said, you're going to do everything I do today. You see, what I am telling you is we spend all of our time missing the point. Now, I'm, I'm going to hurt you because I want you to think different. Do we need to pray? Yes, we do. It's amazing that the only time God, of Jesus asked God to do anything was for us. You know that, right? When Jesus prayed to God, He said, make them one. When Peter rebuked him, he said, Peter, I prayed for you because the enemy wanted to sift you like we did. But I prayed and you're going to make it. He didn't say, I got you out of it. What he did say was, you're going to make it. And I tell you, you, on the inside of you, if you've got Jesus Christ, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, inside of you is all the healing the world needs. You won't have to ask God one time. You know why? Because He already gave it to you. I know that hurts your feelings because that's not the way we've been taught. We've been taught to ask God to do things. Let me tell you something about God. God is just looking for a relationship with you. He's already put power in you. He's already put His anointing on you. He's already put all of that stuff there. How am I the world you keep saying, God, give me more, more, more? You're as full as you're going to get. Yes. That's it. There's no more room. The problem is that you're going to pour it out. So when you read those stories, in the Word of God. Who do you identify with? Are you crippled? Or are you the supplier of the need? See, I know that hurts our feelings because Jesus is supposed to be the supplier, right? But doesn't He live on the inside of you? Yes. We're supposed to pray in the authority that Jesus Christ has given us, yes. But it doesn't want you know what it says. It says when you're talking about you and you're praying and you're in that time of relationship with God, ask the Father in my name and He will give you. What? Not healing? That's already supposed to be ours. Not joy, not peace, not strength, not any of those things because it's already there. Why do you keep saying, God, give me? Why don't you say, God, stir it up? You know what Paul told Timothy? He said, son, stir up and get the thing. It's gotten a little stale. Stir it up. You know how you do that? You do. You don't pray. I'm sorry. You're supposed to pray. That's your communication, your relationship with God. But not for people to be healed. You're supposed to heal them. Not for people to be, be... Look, when Jesus walked into the, the graveside... I, look, greater things, alright? When Jesus walked in the graveside, did Jesus say, Father, bind that demon up! Cast him out. <laughs> nope. Now what he said... Now what do you say? Okay, wait a minute. 
For those of you that have actually cast a demon out of somebody, what did you say? Let's go there, all right? Oh, the enemy's real. He's real defeated, but he's real. Can I tell you that God has already given you power? I'm telling you, there's so much more to you than you realize. There's so much strength and there's so much power and there's so much anointing. And you know why it doesn't flow? Because you've been told it's good. You've been told that's not the way you do it. I'm telling you something different. And I challenge you, give it a try. You've got it the other way. How successful I like Dr. Phil. And how's that working for you? <laughs> why don't we try something different? Why don't we become the event? You know what the event was? When Peter walked by and said, Silver and gold have I none. Get up. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the event that changed that young man's life. Or old man. I don't know if I'm going to say it. When Jesus healed by, by blind Bartimaeus, did he once say, Father, he did. No. See, I, I know that's not what we've been taught. What I'm telling you is you've already got the power. See, as long as you don't think, as long, listen, as long as you, as long as you identify right there with that cripple, then you don't have what it takes to do what you're supposed to do. So we identify with the cripple man. You know why? Because there's no responsibility there. And all we get from God is a handout. Now I hate to tell you this, but my relationship with God is more than this. If that's all your relationship is and you're still begging God for something, you missed it somewhere. God's not into the begging business. God's into the loving business. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to know your inner thoughts. He wants you to talk to Him. He wants to talk to you. And it's not all about these and thous. It's about opening your life and being intimate with Him. That means into me see. Into me see. Into me see. That's all he wants. Now, are you the cripple? Are you the blind? Are you the deaf? Are you the depressed? Are you the ones that are full of anxiety and fear? Are you still waiting on another move of God? You're waiting on somebody else to lay hands on you. You wait. Listen, we got true prophets of God going to hit the house Friday night. It's going to be awesome, I guarantee you. But let me tell you something. They're no more anointed than you are. They're no more anointed than you are. And I'm going to give you a hint. They're no more anointed to prophesy than you are. They're no more anointed to heal than you are. The only thing that may be different is what they believe. So do you identify with the cripple? Yeah, now see, now we go, no, uh-uh, no, no, no. <laughs> The only way we are going to change the world is to understand that we carry everything the world is looking for right inside of you. It's easy to get discouraged, distracted. Man, I don't know about y'all, but for the last couple of weeks, it's been one distraction after another in my life. It's been one attack after another. It's been one something after something after something. It just literally has. I was coming home for Bernie and I said, you know what? Enough. Bring it on, big boy. Throw your best because I'm not focusing on anything. Right. 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 Oh, I was disheartened and I was discouraged for about that long. You know why? I know I don't have to keep this. So. Oh, I'm not saying the enemy's not going to attack you because he's going to. He's going to beat on your mind. Can it beat on your mind and beat on your mind and beat on your mind? Now, I'll be very honest with you. He can't beat on your body. So don't blame the devil for you getting sick. He's not that powerful. Oh, now see, I was... Yeah, I'm not going to go there. We'll leave that one alone. Uh, <coughs> the devil doesn't have that much power. Now, some stupid decisions in your life may have brought on that sickness. But you want to tell me how powerful the devil is if he can take a child of God and make them sick? Come on, man. Think about how that sounds. 
Oh, I know a lot of people who believe the enemy can do that stuff. Nah. Now, to the world, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Man, I'm a child of God. How dare you lay your hands on me? So you know what? All he can do is this. And you know what I tell him to do? Is this. <laughs> he starts this, and I go, huh? You know why? There's not no power in your life either. Quit being discouraged. Quit being full of despair, anxiety. Quit identifying with the cripple that's not good enough, barely getting by. Stop that stuff! Because it's a choice. You know, I, I, I see in Facebook and I've got family in that, that have this opinion that uh, addiction is a disease. You seen that commercial? Addiction is a disease. No, it's not. Addiction is a choice. Now, it may become a disease, but it's a choice. Now, let me tell you something about the things of God. It's a choice. Yes. You don't have anything less than another child of God. I don't care where you came from. I don't have care how, how early, how new a Christian you are. But do you really think that God pours it in a little at a time as you grow up? Okay, he needs a little more. Okay, okay. Now, what do we... We get everything we do is it, like the baby. We're full. Well, then we grow up about this talk. Well, okay, then we need some more because we got more space. That ain't the way it works. That's the way we think sometimes. I gotta have a little more. No, you don't. You got to activate what you already got. You got everything. You know why you got everything? You got Jesus Christ. Right. We've got to think. Quit thinking that He's less than. Don't identify with the purpose. Expect to be the supplier, yes. not the one in need. Some of you have been in need more of your life and you expect to stay there. If you stay in need, it's your own choice. I tell you today, if you stay in need, it's your own choice. Because that's not the way God created you. So think different. Heavenly Father, I thank You for what You're doing in this place. Lord, I thank You for all the stuff that You're it's showing to us and explaining to us and moving on us, Father. Father, I thank You for all of it. Lord, as conference rolls around, and, Father, reveal Yourself to us more and more. Because that's all we need, a greater revelation, not a greater outpouring, not a greater infilling. What we need is just to activate what we've already got. So show us more revelation. Our Father, you said in your word, if I see you, I'll be made like you because I'll see you. Raised. So Father, I thank you.